If there was any way I could describe this guitar, it would be Tone Machine. What's going on guys? Welcome back. If you're new here, if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. Alright, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button, alright? For today, we have a brand new Gibson Explorer. Now for me, this is completing sort of the trifecta of Gibson guitars. I've already done a demo of the Les Paul and the Flying V, and so now it's only fitting I'm going to do a review on the Explorer, alright? Unfortunately, Gibson is on hot water this year. They have filed for brand bankruptcy. It's such a shame because Gibson's an American brand, classic American pastime, and unfortunately they're slowing, slowly going under. I, however, don't see anything wrong with what they're putting out in 2018. The specs of this guitar, mahogany body, granadillo, granadillo fretboard is not rosewood because rosewood is unfortunately endangered at the moment. First bucker two and three, respectively. Stop tailpiece, pretty standard bone nut, and uh, yeah, I mean, pretty standard stuff. Everybody knows what they're getting with the Gibson. Nothing out of the ordinary here. So for this song, for this song, I am in A sharp standard. Really obscure tuning for me. I've never played it. The reason why I'm doing it is because a band by the name of Dream Theater has a song in A sharp standard, which I'm currently learning, and I love it so much that I decided to demo this song in A sharp standard. So I'm running through my axe effects. When we come back, we'll talk about the positives and negatives of this guitar. So here is the song.
that's what the 2018 Gibson Explorer sounds like. So the positives and negatives, as always, gotta go through them. Start with the negatives first. First negative is the shape of the Explorer itself. Now, if you've never played an Explorer like, like myself prior to obtaining this bad boy, I never played it and it's a little awkward. It reminds me very much of the dime bag shapes, the Dean stuff. I used to back in the day have a Dean uh, dime slime type guitar, I forget what it's called exactly, but um, it's very similar to that, the way it's, you got this kind of like wing out here and the huge cutaway here. Very similar to that, but it's a little awkward, so I would give it a negative. Another negative, pickups aren't that hot. First Bucket 2 and 3s are designed more for classic rock dudes. However, you can get some pretty sweet metal tones out of them, which is what I was ultimately trying to do. However, give some dirty fingers, more of my style. Ultimately, I, Fishman's are my favorite pickups of all time. And I'm planning on potentially swapping these out for those, so spoiler there. <laughs> But other than that, man, there's really not too much negative with this. I mean, it's, again, a Gibson, it's built built very, very well, and I am utterly disappointed that they have so much flack, and, you know, I just wish Gibson didn't have such a bad rep right now because they're a very, very good company. For the positives for this guitar, there are a lot. First one, mahogany body. A huge, huge mahogany body. This thing is massive, massive piece of wood. It is not chambered. I like that a lot, not chambered. One of the things I didn't like about the Les Paul, particularly because it had some weight relief, and that ultimately makes it kind of sound nasally and kind of weird. So, huge chunk of solid mahogany ultimately resonates through with a set neck. I mean, it is a recipe for some serious tone, and that's what this guitar has. Another positive is there's no push-pull plots on this thing. I personally can't stand that. I think it's a huge gimmick for guitars to, you know, have split coils to I, I get it, I guess people want diversity and stuff, but like, dude, I think it's so stupid when you have to like pull on something and then it splits it or it like has like a direct signal, whatever, just, I just think it's gimmicks, man. I don't like it. I don't like pulling on anything. I like it just, the simpler the better. That's why I, the Jim Root model the Strat over there is probably my favorite setup, active pickup, one volume knob, simple, simple, simple. I don't like push pulls. This does not have it. Ultimately, awesome. Another positive. Tuning. Tuning was phenomenal. Unlike the Flying V, which I could not keep in tune to save my life, this thing stays in tune phenomenally. I was ultimate, also surprised because I was in A-sharp standard, which is very, very low and could be flubby, you know, on paper. But this thing held it, held tuning, like, throughout the entire take of any, you know, any of my guitar tracks on that song. So, I was surprised by it and I was ultimately very, very pleased and Thankful, basically, that I didn't have to keep tuning it. And we'll go with one final positive here. It's an American-made guitar. I'm very patriotic. Being a former Army dude myself, I support American-made guitars because, you know, ultimately we got to support our own country. And I, I get why people get import stuff, but I love handcrafted American-made guitars. And unfortunately, again, Gibson has a bad rep for whatever reason. I don't see a problem with anything they're making. This thing is incredibly well made and it sounds huge, man. Out of the three that I've demoed this year, the Les Paul, the V, and now the Explorer, the Explorer knocks it out of the park in comparison between all three of them. It's not even close, man. Honestly, it's night and day between the Les Paul and the Explorer. The Explorer had no weight relief, no push-pull pots, huge chunk of mahogany. And it is just badass, man. Like, it is just huge sounding, and I just love it. It is amazing, amazing instrument. Therefore, it is my favorite of the three that I've got my hands on this year. So, that's the demo of the Explorer. What do you guys think? Please let me know down in the comments. Please hit that subscribe button again if you're not a subscriber already so you don't miss out on my next video. Take care, dudes. Stay metal above all, and I will see you next time.